Hey viewers, Shane here for Ain't That a Shane. I am working on a stovepipe protective cover that's going to go in the window of, I think I might look better like this, um, the window of an ice fishing hut. A friend of mine just picked up. He's behind the camera, Tyler. You can check him out at Living High, Wild and Free. Phenomenal channel. This guy is a celebrity. So I have fireproof welding blanket. So this stuff will not catch fire. It can take extraordinary heat. And this is going to get put into the inside of his ice fishing hut where there was a removable window. It's just a really soft, clear plastic with Velcro. But the idea is he's got this little portable stove because it gets really cold up here in the Canadian Midwest in the dead of winter. So I'm going to be cutting out a piece that's going to fit inside this window using my beloved Juki. And from there, he should be able to use it this winter. And uh, follow along, kids. Here comes the process. In working with this material, it's, uh, it's essentially fiberglass and it's fire retardant, but there's a weave to it. It's a really long, a very long grain weave. And as I start to work with it, even when I'm marking it here, you can see it wanting to sort of pull apart a little bit, which won't be a problem, I don't think, in the long run, like when I get this all sewn up. But just for marking and cutting, and even sewing, I'm really going to have to work it with my fingers to make sure that the weave isn't pulling apart, and I don't wind up with some bits that kind of start to roll the edge on me as I go along. So it's just one of those things you're up against when you're working with an unusual fabric, but clearly someone figured out how to use this. And the other key is, if you ever have to wash this, don't put it in with your underwear, or put it in with someone else's underwear if you dislike them, because little bits are gonna come off. And they're gonna be so itchy. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, the fibers on this fiberglass are really, really long. And this thing just wants to pull apart. And I really don't want it winding up in my socks and my underwear. So I'm going to do a double roll. So I'm going to fold it over once. And I'm going to fold it over again to stitch it. Now, if I was really a professional, and I'm sure all the people that sew for a living are going to fall out of their chairs laughing at me, it would all be, you know, one stitch. And then, oh, we're going to pin the whole thing and do it again. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel like dealing with a whole lot of fiberglass sticking to me and pulling apart while I'm trying to pin everything. So I'm literally just going to roll it once, roll it twice, and I'm going to start stitching and just work my way along. I just keep working the roll all the way through. And that's the process. So I'm going to be cutting this from the top up there where it's gonna hit the, the screen, or sorry, the window, and I'm gonna be cutting it down to 62. Again, I'm gonna roll it over, same as I did before, and make that little cuff at the bottom of it, just to contain the fiberglass, clean the end up, and this is gonna work really well in the ice fishing shack, I hope. Here we have partly this finished product. We've got it cut to length. Now, one of the reasons it's so long, we have this, this length, but the window's only this length. The issue is that there's going to be a stove pipe going through a cutout shaped like the window. But the stove pipe is going to come down the side of the ice fishing tent. And I don't want any heat getting through any of her... I just lost nouns and verbs. These things happen. Anyway, ain't that a shame. I don't want anything else getting burnt on this tent. So I'm really hoping this will deal with sparks, errant heat, anything else it gets through. I'm gonna show you a really cool trick. So this Velcro has to get sewn on here. Now I can pin it, but again, I'm really struggling with these dimensions and keeping the fabric from moving on me, bowing out. It's kind of like rubber cement on steroids, barge cement. It's what they use when they're making moccasins and they wanna take the leather bottom of the moccasin and they're gonna put this cool rubber sole they have, they actually put this stuff on. So it smells to high heavens. I mean, seriously. 
I mean, the cat will drop things in the litter box that aren't this bad. But, ooh, there we go. I'm going to smear it on. And I want to keep it relative thickness to what this is. And I'm going to let it dry. I want to put just on the edge here. And I'm going to let this dry on here probably for about 20 minutes. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. But I do want to check it next to the original piece. Make sure we're kind of close. All right, a few things have come up. One is um, getting this circle to be, you know, roughly uh, the circumference of the pipe. We can handle it being a little big, that's, that's fine. To have it too small and then to be trying to cram a pipe in it is just not going to work. The other issue really is whether or not uh, with stitching that close to heat source, whether or not, like it's a very heavy polyester thread I'm using. For those who are curious, it's a, a 69 thread, <laughs> which, which, which is what you would use in a juki like this for heavier applications. Uh, they make heavier, but that's the stuff I'm using. It's working like the charm. So it's kind of what we're up against. So what I'm going to do here is I'm making some cuts that are going to give me some fabric to work with, a bit of meat. And I'm going to be squishing and I'm going to have to really try to manipulate this fabric to give me a nice cuff that kind of is circular without it being too small or problematic. So, well, I've done lots of circular cuffs like this before. Never in fabric like this that A has this much warpage and B has, <laughs> frankly, this much fire plus and other itchy things thrown my way. So we're gonna try, I'm gonna be bending it over and then over yet again. And I, I think, I think this is going to work. I think it's gonna be okay. Uh, we will find out one way or another. The fabric is stretching and falling apart of me. Suddenly I have the sunflower sitting here and it's happening so fast as I even barely move the fabric. The fibers all starting to pull out anywhere I've cut it. So at this point, wow, what I'm really fighting is these little threads, all the fibers coming loose. Oh, so uh, I have to go around it yet again and uh, I think it'll be large enough. I hope this is going to work. Um, and if not, we'll just unstitch a part of it anyway. And we'll try it again. Yeah, I think that worked out okay. 